Torpedo-Treffer. Torpedo-Treffer. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Silent Hunter 5 with Mags. Continuing from where we left off, we've proceeded due south towards the Polish coastline with the intention of attacking shipping in the port of Hell. Hell, or Halle in German, is a small town port located at the end of the Hell Peninsula. At the outbreak of World War II, it was one of the two main bases for the Polish Navy. It had an interesting history during the war. Firstly, it was one of the longest defended locations against the German invasion forces, managing to remain out of German hands until the 2nd of October 1939. Following that, the port was claimed by the Kriegsmarine to use as a training facility for U-boat crews until finally becoming the last location of Poland to be liberated from German forces following the surrender of Germany and the end of the war in Europe. A fine place to hunt for Polish warships, and my intention was to go to the port and wait submerged until the sun had risen into twilight before beginning my attack. Unfortunately, I never quite made it. Around 19 kilometers from Hiller, I came across a small convoy of two medium transports at 5,225 tons each. Both flying Polish flags, the course set straight for the port of Hiller, and I couldn't refuse. The initial attack was a spread of four torpedoes, two for each ship, one torpedo aimed at the bow and one at the stern on each ship. Sadly, only two impacts, so clearly I need to improve my aim. However, torpedo two struck the stern of the lead transport of the convoy, detonating the engine room, and from the looks of the fire, setting the coal reserves for the boiler alight. She's done for and no longer worth my time. The second ship fared better, however. The torp hit on the bow, and while the ship does appear to be taking on water, it's nowhere near fast enough for my liking. I can't spend a huge amount of time here either. Being so close to one of the Polish Navy's main naval bases means I can expect a swift response, and I need these ships to be unrecoverable as quickly as possible. So, the easiest way to do that is surface the boat and start engaging with the deck gun. Now, as you can see, I'm sort of trying to range my shots here at the moment, and there we go, one on the aft. If I can get some shots into the rear of the ship and penetrate the engine room and the boiler room in particular on this ship, we'll be all good. She'll go down in a hurry and I can get the hell out of here. Now, I know from the last video there was a few complaints about the brightness. Yes, I have turned the brightness up. In fact, I've got the gamma turned up as much as I can in-game during recording without starting to affect the graphical quality. Um, this is a game that doesn't particularly Secure like having the running. brightness turned up too much. And I'm going to quickly Close kick the engines into gear here and begin closing in because the ship is slowly making its way away. Um, I've also tried to up the brightness a little bit in the post-processing. Again, it's as far as up as I can go. As I said in the comments of the last video, blame Hitler for starting the war during the night. And, well, more to the point, this is actually a really good example of what submarine combat is actually like at night time. You often don't have good vision. I do have starburst shells available that I could potentially use. Uh, to light the area, basically big flares that you fire out of the deck gun in order to light up ships. But being so close to the port of Healer, I don't particularly want to do that just yet. Most of the sighting that I was doing for the ships, because you can probably see better slightly than I could while I was playing the game, was actually looking for the wakes breaking on the bow and the stern. These gave me a rough idea on the length of the ship and the angle that it was on, and then aiming based on that information. The ship itself is almost indistinguishable from the horizon when I'm playing in-game, although, as I said, with the lighting adjustments here, believe it or not, you can probably see a little better than I could at the time. 
Now what I'm trying to do here is group my shots into the same area. This seems really silly to say, but ships are really big, and this gun isn't. So what I need to do in order to be able to hit the engine room and the other ship internals is to punch holes through the outer hull of the ship, and then try, if at all possible, to put a second shell through the hole made by the first one. This allows the shell to sink deep inside of the ship's internals and hopefully should cause some nice explosions, detonations and damage inside. Ideally, if at all possible, would be to punch the outer skin open with an AP shell and then follow up with a HE shell. But uh, unfortunately, since I can't clearly see where I'm putting the holes in the ship at the moment, being able to do that is actually quite difficult. So I'm sticking with AP for the shots for the moment. Now as you can see to the right hand side of the gun sight, the lead ship in this small convoy is well below the waves, over half the ship has sunk, so again, don't need to worry about that ship at all, no reason to put any fire in its direction. But judging from that plume of smoke and now the glowing fire effect, I would say that shell actually hit something nice inside the ship. And another good explosion there, at this point I think I've managed to rip most of the outer skin of the hull away for shots directly into the rear into the engine room and the boilers of this ship and it's hard to see from this position because we're looking directly at the rear of the ship and the fire is obviously a little bit further up the hole because the shells have been penetrating from the rear quite a significant distance but it looks like the fire is coming in from exactly the same place that the fire was burning on the lead ship which means we may have managed to hit the coal reserves uh, it looks like we've got some extra explosions going off there, so yeah, definitely something something flammable just went up. Explosions and the sound of twisted and screeching metal. Exactly the sounds a U-boat captain wants to hear. So as the lead ship of the convoy slowly begins to sink below the waves and into the depths below, and as the second ship in the convoy does its best impression of my U-boat during a crash dive, I think it's time to leave the area. Especially since the last ship, when that last explosion went off, also fired a red flare, which is a distress flare. I expect we have ships of the Polish Navy coming in this direction in a real hurry right now. So once again we'll head back to the Koning Tower and have a little bit of a look around, make sure everything's all good, and then, as you can see, the red flare burning in the background just up in the sky. That's what's going to cause us a problem. The sky does appear to be lightening a little bit at this point, so we are slowly getting closer to twilight. Unfortunately, it didn't arrive soon enough. And that is the second ship in the convoy, the one we've been hitting with the 88 on the deck. The lead ship in the convoy has just managed to sink below the waves, so it is now gone. And we should have some lifeboats around here somewhere. Yeah, she's only going to be on the surface for a couple more minutes. And yep, we've got some lifeboats over here. We've got quite a few of them, actually. So it looks like most of the crews managed to bail out, which is fine. I'll leave them to themselves. I have no doubt they'll be collected by Polish warships rather soon. So with that, it's time to head below the deck, seal the top hatch, and once again sink below the waves. Periscope depth. And once again showing the true strength and tenacity of a German U-boat crew, my deck gunner crew will never abandon their station, even as the submarine is submerging. They will just hold their breath until the next time we emerge to attack a new target. Damn it, Ubisoft, you had one job. So, having safely sunk beneath the waves, let's take a look around the internals of our submarine. Now, the internals in Silent Hunter 5 are actually fairly well modelled based on the Type 7 that you are supposed to be captaining. We'll start off in the bow of the ship in the torpedo room. As we can see, we have four torpedo tubes in the front. We only have one torpedo remaining, however, the other three are sealed up. We have no supplies. And... For some reason, our crew appears to be polishing the torpedo, or... Oh, rubbing it lovingly, I'm not entirely sure. Apparently they really like this torpedo. But there is animations in the torpedo room. As you can see, it's moving forward into the tube. We have one member slowly cranking it into position. 
Another one is working down on the rudder assembly for the torpedo itself. As the reload timer runs through, they will slowly push the torpedo all up until it's in the tubes and eventually seal the door. So, proceeding out of the torpedo room, we have the forward crew compartment. This is mainly housed with some officers and the, uh, the main torpedo operators in the front of the ship. Not a lot of space inside of a U-boat, as you can see, and there is a toilet back there. It's one of two toilets on a Type 7, one at the bow and one at the stern. The mod seems to have added a few extra little details for authenticity inside. Uh, the rails are simply to keep you in bed while you're pitching around. We've got some really odd sounds in the background there. I think we're actually hearing the sound of one of the ships we just sunk splitting in half. Small sitting area with a small table to the right for the crew to take breakfast and coffees. And then we have the hydrophone room and the radio room. Both of these are operational. In fact, the hydrophone room you will be using a lot in Silent Hunter 5. When you can't get a visual detection on something, the hydrophone is the way to do it. It's actually really easy to operate. The dial in the bottom right hand corner is the volume. You basically max that. And then you simply scroll the mouse wheel in order to change the bearing that you're listening to, with directly up being towards the front of the ship, and you rotate it left and right in order to listen around, keeping in mind that the noise from the main drive shafts at the rear of the submarine will distort sound directly behind. The radio operates mostly automatically, but you can come in here and if you have the right parts of the mod activated, manually decode messages should you choose to do so. It looks like we've got another piece of little detail up there. I don't recall that being in the game stock, so that should be a mod addition. I think. Now, there are a couple of types of hydrophone available in game. At the moment, we've got the default standard one, which is fitted to the underside of the hull. I'll go into these in more detail in the future. So, sealing the hatch, we have the control room, and this is where we operate most of the submarine from. These three gentlemen to the left actually guide the ship. Two are operating the engines and the rudder controls while the third is operating the dive planes, adjusting the angle of attack to the submarine and maintaining depth and, you know, keeping us on the surface. Over to our right we have our maps. Uh, we can just click on these and it will load up our tactical and navigation maps so we can find our way around. Obviously we have the ladder that leads up to the Koning Tower and the attack periscope. We also have the observation periscope down here, just to our left. A little bit more fluff down here, some extra maps. There's nothing here you can really activate. The main shaft running through the center is actually where the periscopes are housed internally. And then we have our rear hatch leading down towards the engine room. Now we have a second crew compartment in here. Again, it's pretty basic as you would expect. This is mainly where the engineering crew for the submarine would sleep, although beds are fairly flexible in a submarine. Outside of the captain's personal bed, you slept wherever was available. So directly behind that we have the kitchen and the cook. Now this is actually rather important in Silent Hunter 5 as morale of the crew is a factor and having a well-trained chef provides some good meals, obviously keeps that up. Very important in real life too. And then we have the main diesel engines which are currently shut down because we're submerged and operating on electrical only. And heading down to the rear of submarine we will have the main electrical engines and the main drive shafts at the rear. What I think we're going to actually do is surface the boat and see, because those diesel engines are actually animated. So, once again, heading back into the engine bay, and as you can see, the engines are all fully animated when they are operational. So now we're back on the surface, the diesels are chugging over, these are simultaneously pushing the ship along and recharging our batteries for the electrics. We obviously do have a limited amount of oxygen, amount of battery power to actually run the electrics when we're submerged, as well as fuel limitations on the diesels, and obviously restrictions on torpedoes. Everything is set to real life values or at least as close to real life as the combination of the game and the mod actually allows. So that's the inside of a Type 7. It's not particularly big, but it does contain everything that it needs to get the job done. Anyways, as I expected, our hydrophone operator has detected one, possibly two ships operating in the area. These ships have been detected to the northeast of us. 
heading directly for the location of the convoy that we just sunk, so I expect that they are Polish warships coming Two, to find out what's one, going on. Ready. Additionally, we've also got vision on the defences at the port of Hila. The peninsula is so small we can clearly see the town and parts of the port regardless of which angle we actually happen to approach from, and we are relatively close at this time. And as darkness is beginning to rapidly fade as we approach the early morning twilight, our chances of being detected on the surface are actually increasing. However, I want to get the hell out of this area. I don't particularly want to operate submerged for too long. One, because we've been using the battery power fairly heavily, although we're still pretty good in that regard. And two, because, well, it's not very fast. So we've gone to flank speed. And we're going to open up as much of a gap as is possible and hopefully we won't be detected on our way out and we should be able to make our way back to the port of Kiel. And that is now our mission objective. We have completed our patrol in this area. We've got one torpedo left in the stern, one torpedo that is now loaded into the tubes in the front of the U-boat. And oh, around a third of our ammunition left for the deck gun. And we've been ordered to return to Kiel for a new mission assignment. So, with the seagulls following our path, we make our way home. So having invaded the Polish Navy, we settled in for what should have been a smooth and clean return home, safe within German waters. However, about halfway back the next day, just before lunchtime, we came across a fresh target. A single Polish merchant ship heading directly for the German coast, on its own. Now while I didn't take the time to identify this particular vessel, it did appear to be a slightly smaller size than the ships we sunk the morning before. And by this point, all captains within the Polish Merchant Navy should be fully aware that they are now at war with Germany. So what it was doing in German waters, I have absolutely no idea. However, with there being a smaller class, and so deep in such a safe location, and apparently unarmed, I figured there was no need to try and approach this one with stealth in mind, instead deeming to rush directly at the vessel at flank speed and engage it with the deck gun. Having successfully ranged the target, we began engaging. Now, this ship was surprisingly durable. Despite the vast majority of my shots actually managing to land home, the ship itself took almost 30 AP rounds and 20 additional HE rounds to finally cause significant enough damage to guarantee that the ship would actually sink, despite a large number of these shells causing massive explosions and fires. Although having said that, this particular ship seemed to have a lot of its cargo strapped to the deck, so I suspect a lot of the explosions that I was actually seeing were simply the cargo on deck detonating after direct impacts. Still with the ship itself offering no apparent threat, I continued to close in allowing me to fire more and more accurately on the ship, eventually causing critical internal explosions. Not the most complex kill to actually achieve, but still a nice one to take before I head home. With the ship showing clear critical damage towards the rear, fires burning fore and aft and the stern slowly sinking deeper into the water, I decided not to wait around for this one to actually go under. With the ship being so deep inside of German waters, there was virtually no chance of rescue or recovery. And so, the rest of the voyage was rather uneventful, finally making our way back to Port Kiel in Germany, 
on the 3rd of September 1939, arriving in the harbour mouth at just after midday. So with our first patrol complete, we come in with five merchant ships in total, no warships unfortunately, with a total tonnage of 26,160 tonnes. And with that, I leave you all with my promotion. Hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching. Remember to click that like button and to subscribe if you want to see more and you haven't already, and until next time, run silent and run deep. Welcome, gentlemen, and congratulations on a successful patrol. I say the war is off to a good start, yes? Well, it certainly is for you, Captain. I have direct orders from the BDU to assign you to U-122. But what about my boat and my crew? They will receive a new captain. Herr Leutnant, you are hereby promoted to captain of U-27 and are to take command immediately. A second in command has already been assigned to you. He will be waiting for you by the boat. Now, please, gentlemen, if you will excuse me. Come back later for your mission briefings. I have an urgent call with Naval High Command. So, Captain, war changes everything, doesn't it? Let this be my last piece of advice to you. Never let it change you. We are soldiers. We fight, we destroy, we even kill. But we do it with honor and respect for our enemy. Never forget that. Be good to my crew. They were the best I ever had.